Okay, what we want to illustrate on this car that has a misfire on multiple cylinders, in particular number one, number one showed the most misfires. I want to show how to do an injector balance test on a vehicle that you can't get to the injectors. And there are no bi-directional controls that on the scan tool we can command the injectors to, to do it with the scan tool on this year, it's too old. This is a 96, uh, they didn't start that till later. So I can't use the scan tool to do a balance test. I need to use a timer tool. And that timer tool that we're gonna use, um, it's just a a, uh, a Matco version. And, and you can see on the tool that we have different pulse settings. We have a three and a half millisecond, 10 millisecond, one pulse, and a continuous mode. And, and we'll probably do, uh, on this one, we'll do like a, a 10 pulse setting. We wanna make sure we do the same one for each one. All right, so the problem that we have is if you look at the intake, the injectors are underneath the intake. You can't get to them, so you can't connect this kind of tool. This kind of tool uses a, an external power and ground for the tool, and then it uses this style of injector connector, which would be fine if we could get to the injectors. We can't get to them. So what we, what we need to do to use this tool is we need to identify which one of these two pins is the control wire and which one is the feed. So we're gonna do that, I'll show how to do that. And also what we're going to do is we're gonna use this main bulk connector right here on the back of the intake. We're gonna use this main bulk connector. We good, you see it? And, and we're gonna identify our control wires that all the injectors go through this harness. Um, there are eight wires, six of them are for my injectors, so we need to identify the control wires. We're gonna adapt a T-pin here, run a jumper wire to the correct terminal on here, and we're gonna energize our injectors right here on this connector. To be able to do that, again, we have to identify control circuit here, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Then the other thing that we got in preparation for this, I don't know if you, you can see that. Can you, are we okay there? Yeah. You don't need to be all the way in it, but what we've done is we've identified our orange wires are our feeds and our, our separate colored wires, our pink, our green, our yellow with a stripe, our f solid yellow, our orange with a stripe, another yellow, uh, are our control wires. And we'll look at the actual colors here and we'll compare it to the colors here and we'll know which one our injector control wires are. So that's what we're doing. First thing we wanna do, we want to identify the circuitry on this. So what we've done, I've connected the timer tool. This wire is going to the back of the alternator for power. This wire is going to ground on the block. I've got my test light connected to ground, okay? And on the tool, what we should have is a steady feed on one of these two wires. Touch the wire to the left, the light lights, the wire to the right, it's not lit. That's gonna be my control wire, the one to the right. Remember that. I'm gonna double check that. Take your test light. Go to battery positive. Can you put me on battery positive over there? And we're gonna just double check that we're doing the right thing here, which is the control wire. And so when I touch ground with my test light, test light's gonna light. Our control wire, which is this one, is a pulsed ground. And so what should happen, I'm holding the test light on there. What should happen when I hit the button is my test light should light and it should flick on and off. Oh, I'm on a one pulse setting. Let's go 10 pulse. It should flick on and off. Do you see the flickering? Did you catch that? So flickering of the test light, that's my guy. So what do we confirm? The one to the right is my control wire. And so what I'm gonna do so I don't get screwed up on this, I'm gonna scratch a C in the side of this connector. So the next time that I use this tool, What's C gonna stand for? C is control. I know which one my control wire is now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my T-pin and I'm gonna put it in my tool. That's my control circuit. I'm gonna take a jumper wire. Jumper wire here. And I'm gonna have to go grab another T-pin. Take our jumper wire and what we're gonna do is individually making sure this doesn't touch ground too. 
we're going to individually take our jumper wire, which is our, now our control for our timer tool watch. I'll show you one more time with the test light. Test light to here, touch the button on the timer tool, what do you see? Flash. It's pulsing. So I'm going to take this, again, one more time, checking the circuit, making sure. This is absolutely the control of my timer tool now. This vehicle the injectors are powered with the key on. All I need to do is turn the key on. We're gonna use existing injector power and we're just gonna be the computer and ground each injector circuit using this and a T-pin on this main harness connector for the injectors, okay? Identified by our wiring diagram. That's a little T-pin. So give me uh, starting on that list over there, Bob. What do you got for a control wire color? Starting with, uh, let's do injector number one. Black wire. Injector black. one is solid black. All right, so, so we filming still? So solid black wire on this connector. I got a solid black wire up top. Let's make sure I don't have two of the same color because that's gonna mess us up. Nope, only one solid black wire on this connector, then I feel pretty confident. We're gonna go after this top wire. Connect my, my tool up to that. I have a T-pin in this connector right there. And uh, I am connected to my timer tool. And what we need is the key on now on the vehicle to supply power to that injector. That's my number one injector. And we are totally not ready yet. The reason we're not ready, we don't have a fuel pressure gauge connected to the vehicle. What are we watching for if we don't have a fuel pressure gauge, right? We're not watching anything. Just pause it. Let's <laughs> All right, so now we have our fuel pressure gauge connected. Now we can actually make this test work. And uh, what, we, what we're looking at is, is rest pressure right now on the fuel system. And we're going to fire the injectors, each of them the same time frame. We've chosen 10 pulses or 10 millisecond to look for a, a pressure drop in each injector to be the same. And what I've chosen to use instead of cycling the key is there's a fuel pump test connector GM uses and I have direct battery voltage. I'm just going to jump voltage to that and you're going to see fuel pressure gauge as I jump that little arcing there is the, the uh, fuel pump turning on. You see the pressure gauge moving when I do it. And so that'll give me my rest pressure for each one. And uh, hard to see that number. It looks like about 43. 43 pounds of pressure is my rest pressure on that. And we're gonna use that as a starting point. We're already connected to the number one with my timer tool over here. I'm gonna hit the button on this. We're gonna watch the gauge. So we're at 43 and holding. Hit the button. Injector is pulsing. And that dropped down to 35, 37. So remember those numbers. 43 starting, 37 on the drop. Okay, we'll do each one twice just to be sure we don't want to do it more than twice because we're going to flood the cylinder out, cause a hydro lock condition. That would be not good. Starting at 43, and we'll do a pulse again, and that's down to 37. 43 to 37. All right, now next thing we're going to do is go to the next injector. The next injector control wire, what is the color? Can you tell me? T-pins in my light green and black, which is my number two injector. We gotta repressurize the system again. Rather than cycling the key, use the fuel pump test connector, jump direct battery voltage to it, get our rest pressure back up to 43, and it is. Hit the timer tool. Forty-three to thirty-seven. Okay, we keep going. We can do it again, just to be sure. Probably won't do them all twice. Once is good enough. Forty-three, thirty-seven. Give me the number three injector control wire. Pink and black. Pink and black is number three. Can you hold this light for me? The second one you did was forty-three to what? Same thing, 43 to 37. The rest of you just gonna do one so time. the next one's pink and black? Yep. I want to make sure I don't jump the pink wire in here. That'd be the feed wire. That'd be blowing a fuse if I did that. So that one is my pink and black right underneath that. 
T-pin, get my control wire for my timer tool, connected my T-pin. Got to repressurize again. Forty-three. You don't need that. Thirty-seven. Okay. So so far we got three injectors that are all the same flow rate. Us having a number one cylinder misfire primarily already tells us we're barking up the wrong tree. But we'll finish the test anyway. Let's finish the flow test on the injectors. Light blue and black. Light blue and black's the next one. Yep. We're gonna repressurize our fuel system. 43, hit the timer tool. 37. Okay, injector number five. Black with a white, correct? Yep. Injector five. How we doing, Clint? Good. Repressurized fuel system. 43. Thirty-six. One more time. Forty-three. Thirty-six. <laughs> one PSI difference. One more injector. Number six. Yellow with a black. Yellow black. Yep. Pressure eyes. 43 starting point. 36. So maximum allowable difference. Really don't want any difference at all, but maximum allowable is 1.5 psi lowest to highest. So we got four of them, four of them that are dropping to 37, two of them that are dropping to 36. Our main focus was the number one cylinder anyway. Which means our injector, our injectors are fine. We need to move in a different direction for this intermittent misfire that we have on this car. That is how you do a balance test on a vehicle where the injectors are covered by the intake manifold. Uh, it can't always be done. It has to be a sequential engine for you to be able to do this. There has to be individual control wires. Be extra careful that you're using the timer tool correctly. Be extra careful that you're not jumping the wrong wires when you do this test. That's it.